Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. A verdict handed down in the Shane Gibson bribery trial. We've got the latest. More details on BPL's rate reduction bond. A woman's body discovered in Yamacraw, plus 500 gifts handed out by royal kids. News is brought to you by Alive. In best. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Not guilty. That was the verdict in the Shane Gibson trial this evening. The former cabinet minister has a lot to be thankful for this Thanksgiving after the nine member jury found him not guilty of 15 counts of bribery after less than three hours of deliberation. It comes two years and three months after Gibson was charged. It's the second failed case against a former politician since 2017. Jasmine Brown has been following this trial since day one and filed this report. Emotions ran high once the jury's complete verdict was read aloud in court with Gibson and his family members shedding tears. Gibson was acquitted by the one-man, eight-woman jury shortly after 5 p.m. following less than two hours of deliberation. The jury voted unanimously on 13 other bribery counts and capped a six-week trial before Supreme Court Justice Carolita Bethel. Once the not guilty verdicts were read, family members and supporters erupted with chairs, with one man singing a hymn. Gibson also broke down in tears as he thanked each member of the jury as they walked out. Those emotions also ran high outside court as Gibson was hugged by more than two dozen supporters and family members. I want to thank my wife of 33 years for standing by my side every step along the way, for praying with me every single day, for speaking over me, speaking of my life and for just supporting me in every which way possible. Then I want to thank my legal team, Mr. Katie Knight. QC from Jamaica, Mr. Damien Gomez, QC. Mr. Philip Fish McKenzie, QC to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And Mr. Owen Wells, QC to be. Gibson said the entire legal process was a difficult one, but he insisted he felt vindicated. It, it was very emotional. You know, it, it started with me being taken to court, when at that time I could hardly walk. And so it started there, and so standing up inside there, you reflect on all these things. And you know, once we started to pray and ask the Lord to deal with this, we had no issue at all that they were going to find me not guilty. Even though we were up against all of the most powerful men in the Bahamas, That's right. there was one thing they didn't count on. God. They didn't count on God. He also expressed disappointment in the process. As for what is next for him, Gibson said this. I'm going to speak much more to my future and more details about what actually transpired because, as you know, I didn't uh, take the sand because I, legally I didn't have to. And we thought their case was so weak. We said we, I didn't have to take the sand right. because we knew that they couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that I did what they said I did. Gibson, who was a former PLP cabinet minister, faced 15 counts of bribery in relation to $280,000 that prosecutors say he received from contractor Jonathan Ash as an inducement to approve payments totaling $1 million for work done following the cleanup efforts in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew in 2016. The jury's verdict came after Justice Bethel summed up the prosecution and defense's case for the jury and directed them to deliberate. In her summation, Bethel told jurors that they must find the prosecution approved their case without a reasonable doubt or find the defendant not guilty. Gibson is the second member of the former Progressive Liberal Party administration who was accused of corruption while in office and acquitted. Former Senator Frank Smith was cleared of bribery charges in the magistrate's court in February. His acquittal was upheld by the Court of Appeal in August. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, Minister of Public Works Jasmine Bannister announcing today that a new fee will increase consumers' light bills by $30 a month on average. Jared Higgs reports. Why are they adding on fees when most of the time we don't even have power? Bannister's announcement put an end to speculation surrounding government's rate reduction bond bill, which it says will help BPL raise $650 million. He says this form of credit is strong due to its legislative backing. And also requires that the bonds be financed 
by the bill paying customers of BPL. That financing will be via a fee applied to every BPL customer. Bannister says on average, bills will increase by $20 to $30 per month. I don't, I don't think no one's going to really be down with that. If it's outrageous, I can have the question and I can be against it if, it's, if it don't make sense. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis himself told parliamentarians that BPL performed poorly this summer. Some residents expressed astonishment at the increase, saying their service was so inconsistent they didn't believe it warranted an increase in cost. I really paying the bills, but I feel it for my family, you know. Who's paying? Well, my Grammy, my auntie, and my mommy, them. Why I tell you? An extra $30 on top of the bills we got to pay is already hard now. We're trying to make ends meet. The government says that that $650 million it plans to raise through the special purpose vehicle is going to go towards paying off a $321 million debt at BPL, as well as investments in infrastructure such as renewable energy. Now we ask some customers how they feel about the new fee, considering that this is what government says the money will go towards. I mean, that's a good thing. But at the same time, the government has have so much loose money laying around, they could find other things and instead of charging the people extra money, this or that, you could find different benefits or different funds that they got going on dealing with, that they could take a certain amount of money from this fund, a certain amount of money from this fund, and they could do all they have to do instead of always charging the people. It's hard out here now. If something have to be done, let's do it. But I think we need uh, the country to go towards um, sustainable energy and economic growth. They need to be more creative, use more austerity measures and find cost-cutting measures. Because most, a lot, look at the number of people whose bills are off and on payment now. We have more people in more darkness. Bannister says the $30 average increase will last for 10 months during 2020. He says the fee will be offset by reduced generational costs by 2021. Reporting for our news. I'm Jared Higgs. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis vowing in Parliament today that his government will end the practice of women having sex in order to advance in the workplace. He made the comments as parliamentarians wore orange accessories to support Zonta Club's 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. As far as women having to engage in sexual favors for advancement in the workplace, Mr. Speaker, we will eradicate that and ensure that those male beasts are placed where they rightfully deserve. Police are investigating the murder of a young woman whose body was discovered with head and neck injuries behind Stokes Cabana on Yamacraw Hill Road this morning. Police say there is a possibility she may have been sexually assaulted. Vonnie Toot reports. For years, Yamacraw residents have complained about the high level of criminal activity happening inside this abandoned mansion behind me. Well, this morning, their worst fears were realized when the partially clothed body of a young woman was found just outside this home with blunt force trauma to the head. A hearse removes the young woman's body two hours after it was discovered partially submerged in waters behind Stokes Cabana on Yamacraw Hill Road. Sometime after 7.15 this morning, uh, our police control received information from uh, concerned citizens uh, that a female body partially nude was emerged in water here at uh, this area, Yamacraw Beach, uh, commonly known as uh, Stokes, Stokes Beach. Uh, once the officers arrived on the scene, uh, they confirmed those reports. Um, EMS were called in. Uh, the body was uh, removed from the water. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Solomon Cash says the woman, believed to be in her early or mid-20s, appears to have suffered blunt force trauma to the head with abrasions on the neck. Based on the condition of her body, he says it appears it had been in the water for a few hours. But that's not all. We are exploring the possibility that she may have been sexually assaulted. Cash said police have no motive at this time. However, it appears a crime was committed right behind this house. We suspect so based on some physical evidence on the crime scene, which suggests that we, it happened here. This abandoned building has long been a concern for residents of nearby homes. They say they hear strange sounds coming from the dilapidated house at strange hours of the night. When my dog's not barking a strange noise inside here, we hear gunshots on a regular basis. Inside the house? Yeah, gunshots on a regular basis, screaming and stuff. Teenagers think it's fun to come in here during the night and party every now and then, especially when the holiday season come up. And I walked there a few times and there's 
there's all kind of weird things in there. Like what? Seriously, I mean besides condoms and all kind of stuff. In the pool there, there's a beheaded chicken. And last time, a minister's husband was found hanging in there. And besides that, <laughs> some guys come in there to do drugs. It, it, it's just not a fit for this whole neighborhood, you know? It's just an eyesore. The owner refused to tear it down. Residents have formed a crime watch group to petition the government to have this building torn down. They added that sexual activity also appears to happen inside here. While on the crime scene this morning, our camera spotted two used condoms and a discarded condom wrapper on the ground. It is a crime infested place. Every day, like you said, someone's having sex over there. We, we could like see them around in the back of the building. Mm -hmm. You go in there, you see a bunch of condoms. You hear screams at night. To make matters worse, concerned residents say tourists frequent this area and like to stop by this old house. This has been here for so many years, causing so many problems, and nothing has been done. We are so frustrated. Cash was asked to respond to residents' concerns. And we are on the alert. We have our resources in this area that monitors our, our sites like this uh, um, nightly. As homicide detectives investigate this latest killing, residents are urging authorities to do something about this abandoned building before even more bodies are discovered. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonnie Tude. All right, thanks, Vonnie. Well, in addition to recent murders, residents of New Providence have also expressed concern over the spate of armed robberies in recent weeks. Chief Superintendent Solomon Cash said police are on alert and will make their presence felt this holiday season. But as you can see, I'm fully clad in my, my uniform. Um, so this is a part of the initiative moving forward into the Christmas season that we're going to put all of our resources on the street. So you'll find persons from the detective section will be, be in our uniform because, of course, you know, your presence is, is, is important. Since October, nearly every day in New Providence, at least one person was the victim of an armed robbery. Cash added a number of police operations are ongoing throughout New Providence. So you would see officers up and about through all the communities, uh, heavily armed. Of course, you know, we, we, we are targeting prolific uh, uh, offenders who, who are known to us, who we believe may commit now offenses once we, we, we leave them unchecked. Okay, so um, yes, you would see these operations moving straight through uh, for the remainder of the year. Still to come, the Price Control Commission cracking down on price gouging. Plus, that dreaded 5% patron tax delayed once again. Stay tuned.